everyone. This is Teresa Ann, and I am super excited to be able to share with you some digital painting techniques today using several products and software. Um, the main one that I use is Adobe Photoshop. I use a pen tablet with a pen and some of the, the uh, oil painting brushes that come with the Adobe products. Okay, first things first, as you can see in this image, um, I've zoomed in, I'm gonna zoom out. And I opened up this file um, from a source file that I was going to use for this particular project. And I'm using that underneath. So it's basically going to be uh, the source file that's underneath all of my brush strokes. I'm not making a new layer in Photoshop, uh, although I will be doing some of that later in the tutorial. Um, I will be using my pen tablet, and as you can see here, I am sampling using the Alt. I'll click and hold the Alt key and use the left mouse button and sample in multiple areas, and that will change the foreground color in my Photoshop toolbar. So if you look over to the left, those, those colors change as I'm selecting from the Alt and then left clicking with the mouse. And as I do that, then I go back and forth. I let go of the Alt, and then it goes back to my paintbrush. I'm using the Kyle Oil Painting Brush that is supplied with the Photoshop Adobe account. Um, most of those brushes are automatically uh, in the account, but if you need a, any more brushes, you can always go to adobe.com and download more Kyle brushes. Um, I like to use the oil painting brush. Okay. So I'm continuing to sample, and then that's Alt, and left click with the mouse button, I zoom in to Photoshop, and then as I'm not, after I sample, I use my pen on my tablet, and I click and I drag across as if I were painting, and it gives me the brush stroke look, even the small details of a brush stroke, where you can kind of see what debris is left as you are brushing a color if you were using a real, um, paintbrush, it will allow you to see how thick your brush stroke is. So the more pressure I put on my tablet, the thicker the paint is applied. Uh, less pressure gives me more um, debris on the edges and kind of a lighter look and maybe blending. So when I'm trying to blend, I go a little lighter as I'm creating my, uh, my paint and mixing. So I, again, I'm constantly resampling. I'm using the color colors from the original image that is below. Um, now, if I wanted to do this from scratch and I just wanted to take my picture and put it to the side and just freehand it, there's an, you can you can do that. That's there's not a a right right way or a wrong way. Um, but I'm gonna choose to me what works best is using that underneath because I want to have those colors match and it's it's easiest to do that and it also helps with proportion and so why not make it easy for you when you're doing this to just do it in that way I mean that's some of the great benefits of being able to use the Kyle brushes and have a picture underneath as your resource file but as you see me working you're going to notice that I build up and I change things and I change the contrast and I add to it. And that's just part of the artist. You, you have to look at those details and figure out, okay, well, it's kind of dull. I need to add more contrast. I know the contrast isn't there, but I'm trying to make it look like a painting. So I want to make sure that I add more contrast as I need it. I can't say enough how you really do need to constantly sample to get the colors correct and the blending correct while you're working on this. It's like having a paint palette in front of you and every time you go to resample, you're adding that color to your palette and you're using it as you work right on top of the picture. 
uh, Photoshop used to, and you still can use it, but there's this thing called the smudge tool. And in, before they had Kyle brushes and other types of brushes out there, you could smudge a, a picture and make it kind of look like a painting, but it was never that great. With the new Kyle brushes and the new technology in uh, brush creation with Photoshop and other programs that are out there, you now have it to where you can make a brush stroke look exactly like the real deal. So um, with technology change, this has really helped out the artist, the digital artist to create a more cohesive look as a, to a painting as opposed to something that might would look filtered. And the great thing about this is the high quality of the brush. So you can have a digital painting, uh, a very large digital painting that you create and you would be able to make very good detail with these brushes. Um, but as you can see, I'm using the same technique. I'm going to continue to Alt, click, left mouse button to sample. And then as I do that, then I will continue using my brush, changing the size by right clicking with the mouse button. I can immediately get the dialog box to pop up for the size so that I can consistently change in and out, going back and forth as I'm sampling. Um, and it's such as a process of uh, experience. The more you do this, the better you're gonna get with it. And the first painting you do, you may not like it that much, but about two or three years later, if you, if you stick with it, and the more you do, the better you get with it. So practice makes perfect or close to it. Okay, and like I said, it's let's repeat. Use the eyedropper grab some color and continue to use your paintbrush to blend as you're working. And you get to a point where you decide, okay, to add some detail to really get some of that detail to stand out with the brush strokes and the textured brush stroke that happens when you have an oil brush. You may decide you wanna make a new layer. Okay, so you go over to your layers palette in Photoshop and you create a new layer, and in that layer, you are working just in that layer to create a particular um, brush stroke. So if you mess up, you can always delete that particular brush stroke or that particular, that, particularly that layer. I don't like using, I don't like using just the layer and then adding the picture underneath it. I like to blend right on the picture because I'm going to get better blend by doing that. But if I have particular details that I really want to stand out, then I will create a layer so that that way it kind of gives it more depth to the painting. And there's going to be times when I want to accent start, uh, certain parts. So there are benefits to doing both. So in my paintings, I will have the majority of my um, manipulating and creating the paint brushes directly on the image and then I will put layers for uh, certain types of details like the eyes, uh, maybe certain areas that I want uh, the line to be refined and I'll just go back and forth between those layers as I'm working. Um, to blend more I go back into my main background and then of course to create particular details that are maybe even smaller that has more defined lines I will go into those layers that I've created um, for this. And I continue to work, blend, and honestly, I go all over the place. Sometimes I'll be working on the hair and I get tired of working on the hair, so I jump to the face, and then I'll go back and forth until before I know it, I have completed my painting, and then um, I just start really working more and more in the detail, refining those areas, maybe adding a few more layers to add those particular details that I really want to have um, real fine lines and things like that. And it, it's just up to you um, where you begin on your, your journey with the painting as far as what details you start with. But, you know, be flexible when you get tired just like with anything in art, you kind of need to take a breather, get away from it, walk away, put it away for the day, come back to it. You don't want to keep working until you get to the point where you're like, okay, I've got to start all over again. Sometimes, sometimes you get through and you're like, yep, I'm going to have to start all over again. Uh, and 
there are times where I start in the, I do the same thing over again and I like my second outcome. And it's not like, okay, yes, we're not getting a paint palette out and we're not getting brushes out uh, traditional, the traditional way. But with anything, you know, there's nothing wrong with using digital paint brushes. Um, I prefer it. There are several artists that um, like the fine arts. I like both, but I, my, my medium of choice is, when I'm painting is definitely um, using Photoshop and the brushes and a pen tablet. So again, it's just preference of mine, per personal preference. Um, but as you can see, I am constantly using the sampling. I go back and forth between uh, the dropper and then of course my brush but as you'll notice over um, in the in the toolbar I will go into my foreground and I will every now and then I'll add some white accents so that I can have that pop on my painting to where I have that contrast that I need that maybe the original picture does not give me so I want to add those things as I need it um, the majority of the time I will add darker areas as I need it and then of course the lighter areas and a lot of times I wait till the end of finishing up my painting to add those pops of lights and darks as I need it using the uh, paint dropper and of course my oil painting brushes the Kyle brush and um, and I'll just go back and forth with my foreground color changing it out and then just giving it that depth as I need it and again like I said grab some more make some more layers as you need it to um, individually select certain places and then I start like I said I start tackling all of these other areas um, as I feel like as I feel the need I mean there's no like I said there's no right or wrong, wrong way of when you're going where you're going to start on your painting just choose a focal point choose the place that you want to start first and then go from there